Right, so I'm going to get started assuming that you've got this far. In other words, you are looking at this screen having installed Sonic Pi on either your PC or your Mac or on your Raspberry Pi. The reason that Sonic Pi has Pi in it is that it was designed to be used on the Raspberry Pi, which is an amazingly cool, cheap computer that you can get hold of for almost no money. And it means that even if you haven't got a big computer like a PC or a Mac to play with, it doesn't mean that you can't start exploring computer music with this tutorial. Now, if you haven't got this far and you need to install Sonic Pi, all you need to do is head over to this website, sonic-pi.net, and you'll have all the information that you need to get the software downloaded and installed on your computer. There are loads of pieces of software that help us to use the computer to write music, things like Logic or GarageBand or Pro Tools. Sonic Pi is a little bit different in that what we're doing here is writing instructions to the computer in the form of a program and whatever we write into our program that's what Sonic Pi is going to do. To get us started I'm going to show you probably the most important instruction that we can give to Sonic Pi and that is to play something. So if I type play 60 and click this run button in the top left hand corner what we'll find is that the computer will read that instruction and then play as a note of some kind. Excellent, so that's our first complete Sonic Pi program, and so it shows that programs don't have to be really complicated like the ones I showed in the previous video, they can be as simple as one instruction. You might be wondering what the 60 is doing after our play command. Well, that is telling Sonic Pi what pitch of note we want. If you've ever used MIDI and plugged a keyboard into your computer, you'll know that every single note on the piano keyboard has a special number that is assigned to it. And that makes it really easy for us to get software and instruments to talk to each other. The number 60 in MIDI is the number for middle C. So when I type play 60 into my program and hit run, what I'm asking asking the computer to do is take one of its inbuilt synthesizers because it's got lots of synthesizers built into the program and play the note of middle C which is really great. Now obviously the music that I make would be pretty boring if all I could do is play middle C but fortunately every other note on the piano keyboard has its own number so if I change my number to 61 that's going to be the C sharp the next note up on my piano keyboard. If I change it to 62 that's going to be D 63 is going to be D sharp or E flat, 64 is going to be E, and so we can actually get any note that we want just by knowing its MIDI number. Say I wanted to play a little tune with Sonic Pi, well, what would I need to do? Probably write in a few more of these play instructions. Imagine I did this, so say I wanted 60, as we said, that's middle C, so that would be good. Say next I'll put in 68. That could, that's another note that we might want. Put in another one, let's say 61, and another one, play 69. Okay, so hopefully if we hit the run button now, what we'll get is a nice tune uh, going from each of those different notes one to another. Okay, so what happened there? That wasn't quite what I wanted. I was expecting to get note 64, then note 60, then note 68, then note 61, and then note 69. But instead, I just got them all together in a kind of crunch. Which actually sounds quite cool, but it wasn't what I wanted. This is something that's really important to remember when we're writing these programs is that the computer can go through our list of instructions incredibly fast. And so when I submit this program to Sonic Pi to run, it doesn't wait for my note 64 to be finished before it starts playing the next one, the note 60. It just rushes all the way through uh, my five instructions here and that's why we get them all together. If we want Sonic Pi to play a tune, that's what I was kind of after before, we're going to need some way to slow this program down and actually tell the computer to sort of chill out for a minute and not just rush through all the instructions in one go. To do that, I'm going to need to teach you one more command for this lesson, and that is the sleep command. It's dead easy. By typing sleep and then a number, what you're asking the computer to do is to just rest for the number of beats that you write after the command. So here I've typed sleep one, which means I want Sonic Pi to rest for one beat. If I want there to be an even amount of time between all of the notes in my melody, I'm going to need to put a sleep command in between all of those as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and put in a few more sleep commands. 
Because the default tempo in Sonic Pi is 60 beats per minute, until we change that, when we write sleep one, what we're really saying to the computer is stop doing anything for one second or one beat in this case. So my program now says play note 64, which is the E above middle C, then sleep for one beat, then play note 60, which is middle C, then sleep for one beat, then play 68, sleep for one beat, play 61, sleep for one beat, and then play 69. And that should give us a string of notes in order. So let's have a listen and see what this does. So there we go, I've been able to use the play and sleep commands to create a really simple melody in Sonic Pi. Now I should just say, before you go on to the next lesson, I think it's really important that you don't just listen to me and watch these videos, but actually, after every part, you go away and try all of the stuff that we've been talking about for yourself. So before watching the next video, I think you should get into Sonic Pi and write yourself a really simple melody using the play and sleep commands just like I have. And when you've done that, I think you'll be ready for the next part.